Yeah, hello there everybody, my name is Bloomer Brown and welcome back once again to Ballymoon Castle. Uh, we are into episode 5 and it is late spring. And uh, this morning I've decided to take a walk out to field 18 to have a look at the oil and seed rape we have sown. And uh, I'm glad to say that it has actually started to germinate. So I think it is probably time to get our brand new sprayer out here and uh, do a little bit of spraying on that. Um... While I'm at it, I may try to spray field 19 and 17 as well. Um, I think that the wheat has started to grow up there. Uh, just looking up across the way there, we can actually see that there is something happening up there at least. Uh, so it's probably worth giving that a coat of fertilizer as well. And uh, for the fertilizing, I think uh, that the Massey is probably the tractor for the job. It is uh, not an absolutely enormous sprayer, and uh, the, since the tires on this may be a little bit narrower than those on the Fent, um, and because we do have crop destruction turned on, it may be a case that this will do less damage, or at least that's the theory anyway. Um, now, unfortunately, I haven't bought any pallets of fertilizer from the shop just yet. So it is going to be a case that we're going to be refilling from the buy, buy point that is already on the land. And uh, after a bit of struggling around up there, I do manage to make it down to the field and uh, uh, start spraying. There are going to be quite a few jump cuts in this episode. And uh, of course, as usual, I forgot to uh, connect the PTO shaft. And so away we go. Uh, immediately noticing that the uh, crop destruction doesn't seem to be taking effect. And I'm wondering at this point whether or not I actually have it installed. Or at least configured correctly or enabled uh, on this save file. Uh, as it turns out, I do. And I think that this is just what happens uh, when things germinate. It doesn't actually uh, do any damage to it. And of course, uh, double checking that I am actually doing something with this fertilizer instead of just spraying it out on the ground, wasting it. Um, so, yes, uh, today's video is going to be uh, very heavily cut indeed. Um, as I say, the there I was uh, cutting and jumping through the introduction. Um, reason for that is because today I think that we need to go and do some contract work. Uh, we are sitting at about sixty-seven thousand euro, well, just under sixty-seven thousand, and uh, we need to get some money in because there are a lot of jobs and projects that I want to start working on and uh, I'm going to need capital for those uh, the first of which will probably be starting today um, I'm gonna keep that under wraps until a little bit later on um, but yeah uh, that the contracting it's hard to kind of find a way to put it into uh, a video um, I mean sure we've got uh, footage here of me spraying one of our fields but that is kind of different uh, spraying other fields and uh, sowing crops uh, is a little bit less interesting I think to put into a video so I've caught it out uh, incidentally I do have footage in the next episode and if people want to see for the or for the next episode so if people want to see that uh, you know just let me know and I'll pop that in or pop in a little bit more of it at least uh, when it comes to contracting for that so anyway, enough uh, rabbiting about. I managed to get this field sprayed up and um, it is time to head across and uh, have a look at what's going on over at the other fields. And uh, arriving over at our wheat field, uh, we start unfolding the sprayer and get to work. Uh, incidentally, this is an absolutely tiny field and um, it doesn't have a great headland uh, up at the top. Uh, again, using me just double checking that we are actually uh, spreading fertilizer and doing something with it on the land. Um, but yeah, as I say, uh, this is uh, quite a tiny field and uh, the headlands uh, on it are really rather small. Uh, in other save files, I have immediately turned this into a grass field. Uh, but I was thinking that perhaps uh, having a little bit of straw on hand for the winter when we get the cattle would be useful. And uh, we can of course use any of the 
uh, green we get out of this uh, for uh, making dress seed down at the seed dressing plant or the animal market um, uh, to start our planting for next year. Um, so there we go, that was a pretty quick job indeed, uh, although it did take a little bit of time to do in real, in reality. Um, so, um, incidentally I did try to fertilise the grass field, uh, there seems to be something going on there, I'm not entirely sure what's happening, uh, whether the thing is glitching out or it hasn't reached growth stages, um, but currently it's displaying as harvested on the map. And uh, I think as things move along, it um, continues to display that way, but it does start to grow and it kind of oscillates back and over between being harvested and sort of growing. So I'm not entirely sure what's happening there. Um, there may be far too many mods installed on this save file and uh, that might start causing a little bit of trouble for us at some stage. Uh, so yeah, I'm just going to drop the sprayer outside the workshop, I think. Uh, incidentally, I have got a mod installed uh, that gives us a mobile toolbox, as well as one that kind of gives us one of those uh, static tool benches, I think. Mapper's Paradise actually created that as well. Uh, so it will be interesting to get one of them up here to the workshop so that we can actually work on our machines ourselves. Uh, so yeah, uh, taking a little quick look at the animals, it seems that the sheep are doing pretty okay for now. Uh, so what I am going to do, uh, I think, is start jumping into doing some of the contracting. And uh, it may be worth attempting to find a different place to park this vent. It seems a little bit awkward getting into it. Um, so yeah, uh, it is a perfect time actually to start doing a little bit of contracting and build up a little bit of revenue for the farm. Uh, because we are pretty much done with what we want to do for uh, the fields that we have this year. Um, I mean, we'll probably do another little bit of fertilizing uh, before the summer's out. Everything is cut, well, bar the grass field, everything is on second stage fertilization. And we're just basically waiting for things to grow and uh, get our hay harvest uh, started. So it is a good time uh, to not be idle. Uh, spring is in the spring has sprung, as they say, and uh, there are definitely going to be other farmers looking to have some work done on their own fields. Uh, so we are going to take the day and uh, spend most of it contracting, I think. Uh, so the first field we come up to is um, field number seven, I think. I can't actually read that from my display. I'm going to have to just just bear with me a moment. Yeah, it is field number seven. As I say, this is post commentary and uh, the display is sometimes quite small when I uh, decide to do my voiceover. Uh, not that it's working out too well this week. Uh, so yeah, field number seven fertilizing. It's only going to give us about two thousand, a little over two thousand euro. But hey, look, every little penny we get uh, is going to help us out. And so we get stuck into a Voltra, uh, which incidentally does have the uh, row crop tires installed. Although, as we've seen, uh, you don't technically need them all of the time. And uh, of course, there you see me struggling once again with the. Uh, keyboard steer. It would be good if we could get it to a situation where it defaults to having some of these look around features on. They are actually really difficult uh, when it comes to doing things, uh, especially inside the tractor. It's really disorientating uh, when your camera starts flicking about as though it has a mind of its own. Uh, so yeah, it is time to connect up to this fertilizer and get some spraying done. Or rather, get some uh, spreading done. Uh, now, I'm not going to spend the entire day contracting. Um, I will eventually have to check on the sheep just because they're okay for the moment. Uh, doesn't mean that we can neglect them entirely. And uh, I also have a small project planned for ourselves uh, with regard to our own farm. Well, actually, I've got a lot of projects planned. Uh, we just don't have the funds to uh, take them on at the moment. Uh, so, over the next couple of days, I may start doing some of those until it comes time for the hay harvest. Uh, and you can see me having no end of trouble and hooking up this trailer. Um, 
I, I think it's possibly that I am not used to this tractor or something, or the keyboard steer is out a little bit. Uh, not entirely sure. Incidentally, it is a great mod, and it really does help with controlling the tractors, uh, especially when you're having uh, lag issues as well. But um, there, there are a couple of default settings I would like to have changed in it, but um, otherwise, yeah, it is a great mod, and it does help. And uh, I think finally I managed to hook up to the trailer and uh, connect the PTO and uh, it is time to head off spraying or rather spreading we I keep saying spraying this isn't technically a sprayer it's spraying it's spreading out um, pelleted fertilizer solid fertilizer uh, as opposed to a uh, liquid spray so yeah we are going to spend the morning doing this and uh, probably planting another couple of fields as well um, I have noticed that there are a few around the map that don't have anything planted on them yet so it is a case that I may end up showing some of that footage or I may just cut it out um, of course as I say if you want to see some of that kind of thing going on uh, I will leave a lot more of it into the next episode uh, otherwise I will just kind of cut it out like I have in this one and uh, we did a little bit of contracting uh, over the course of the morning and it is now just after half past 11 and uh, I decide that I am going to take a quick drive up to the sheep farm as soon as I can find my bale forks uh, which are of course sitting in front of the bale and I remember them uh, making it quite difficult to back that in. Uh, as it happens, uh, I have actually recorded forward a couple of days and so it is kind of difficult coming back and uh, trying to remember exactly what I was thinking uh, when I was uh, doing all of this. Uh, the thing I have remembered, however, while reviewing all of this footage is that there is going to be a bumper crop of oilseed rape or uh, canola this season around Valley Moon uh, because I have been sowing out and fertilizing a few big fields this morning and to be honest that was to be expected and as far as I know it probably will affect the price that we end up getting for our harvest but I'm not too worried about that since my plan was to store it up in the silo and uh, wait until we hit a great demand anyway and I uh, just hope that the price is pretty good when that does happen. Uh, Bally Moon is uh, something of a challenge for this first season uh, since we don't start out with much in the way of fields uh, not that I'm really complaining about that or anything because it does make for far more enjoyable playthrough uh, but I suppose for videos it does kind of make things a little repetitive for the first season uh, it's also worth noting again that uh, this map is not really seasons ready uh, so playing without the seasons mod would mean that you would start out a little differently perhaps having a crop on this field uh, that we're passing now which we have of course sown with our canola Anyway, uh, talking of land, uh, there is an ulterior motive in heading out to uh, tend the sheep just now. And uh, meanwhile, I do have to go and look at them to keep them productive, uh, or at least as productive as I possibly can without giving them grass. Uh, I have noticed that there is a small field up in that area, and I am seriously considering buying it. Uh, now, I was looking to get hands on field number 10 this year, but looking at the asking price, it is well outside of our budget for this year uh, well unless I wanted to max out our loan which would kind of leave me struggling for the rest of the season and uh, we do still have a lot of equipment to get in and lease uh, so an alternative that I'm thinking of was to grab hold of field number 25 uh, which is a good bit smaller but maybe more within our price range uh, the idea of course is to get some biofuel during the autumn autumn and winter uh, because I have got the improved heat plant mod installed. Now sure I will be doing some tree felling and possibly chipping that this year um, and I could obviously fuel it with that but I kind of wanted to try out the biofuel willow or the uh, poplar uh, since I haven't done much of that uh, in some of my uh, personal playthroughs. 
Now that is going to be a little bit expensive uh, because I have I am going to have to lease uh, a little bit of equipment in the form of, of course, planters and harvesters, and we're going to be spending money on diesel and of course the pallets of willow themselves. Uh, but if it is a case that I don't have the funds to cover the harvesting, I'm not too worried, uh, since as far as I'm aware, uh, the willow is not like the other crops and shouldn't wither on the field. So I can just leave it there until uh, sometime during next season uh, when I have more money uh, to get on to the harvesting of it. And as I say, I'm going to be felling some trees anyway, so I should be able to fuel the boiler that way. Uh, that is, of course, assuming I'm able to afford to purchase the boiler. Anyway, that is all a long way off. And uh, for now, I am going to uh, jump in and take care of the sheep. They have made a little bit of a mess once again at their feeding area. Uh, although it's not too bad, I have seen it a hell of a lot worse than this. And uh, we're also going to take care of their water and their hay. Um, I really should probably try and get them some grass, though doing it is going to be a little bit weird in seasons because, of course, uh, grass bales rot uh, pretty quickly. I think yeah, you'll get about, you'll lose kind of somewhere in the region of half a bale somewhere uh, over the night. Um, so it's, you know, it's not something that we can actually store. Well, I think technically we could store it in the silo, but that's... Uh, a little bit cheesy I think and I don't think I'm going to be doing that because you wouldn't really do that in the real world either uh, you can't just uh, store grass without it rotting on you uh, so I think unless I grab some grass and sort of bring it straight up to them uh, we're going to be stuck uh, with a little bit less in the line of productivity Ah, uh, so yeah, just finishing cleaning them up and I'm going to sort them out with some food and water. Uh, we do actually seem to be running out of hay pretty quickly. Um, but I think that that should be okay. We should have enough to get us through until uh, we begin mowing, uh, which should be actually happening pretty soon. We're already into late spring and um, I'm hoping to do a first cut as soon as the summer comes in. And so, yeah, just going to give them a little drop of water. I'm not actually sure how much is left in this Bowser. Uh, it may be coming close to empty and I'll probably have to drag it back down and fill it up again. Uh, I really wish we had a free water source on the map somewhere, but um, since we don't, I'm just going to have to keep uh, purchasing it. So, uh, on to having a look at this field. I am going to uh, park up the tractor here for a moment. And um, yeah, it's about half twelve now, so it's probably time to have some lunch and uh, go down and talk to the local farmer. Uh, the sheep do seem to be quite happy now that they have been fed. And uh, I'm sure the twins are flat out in there, so I'm not going to bother them this afternoon. And uh, yeah, uh, something I have noticed actually about the wool pallets is the way that they spawn at this spawn point. Uh, the full pallet is sitting there and the new pallet seems to spawn in front of it, which makes it a little bit difficult to get at it with the tractor. Uh, perhaps if we had a forklift, uh, I would be able to get in there and get it out a little bit easier. Um, because of course the trouble is that once you disturb one of the pallets, um, it stops filling it, so you end up uh, with a, whatever a fifty percent pallet or something, which isn't uh, a big deal. I mean, you still get all of the wool out of it, but um, it does end up taking up a little bit more space and spending up your time while you're trying to load it onto a trailer to bring it down to the sale point. Uh, so yeah, I think we are going to take a little walk across the sheep pasture here and have a look at the livestock as we're making our way over and uh, see if I can make my way through the hedge or uh, jump a fence and get over uh, and have a look at field 25 to see if it is uh, something that we are interested in buying as our biofuel willow field. Um, 
taking a look at the map uh, just to try and get my orientation set up uh, I don't spend half enough time walking around on the fields like this and I probably know the roads uh, around Ballymoon just a little bit better than I do uh, crossing the fields so I think we can make our way in across the field here and uh, there is a massive field that we are not looking at so yeah this is field 25 itself um, it's actually a little bit narrower than I thought it was going to be um, and we've got a little bit of stubble there um, so yeah I suppose we might as well head down to the farmhouse here or at least the trigger point and uh, see how much this field is actually going to cost us and so after a bite of lunch and a little discussion with the local landowner uh, we are now the proud owners of field number 25 and uh, so with the rain uh, about to begin i've made a call to my helper and uh, he is going to meet me down at the shop with the Fent tractor and also uh, our trailer so that we can start uh, shipping up some stuff to that field and uh, begin the planting for the winter season. And so at, that uh, at about half four in the evening with the rain absolutely hammering down we managed to reach the field uh, we have leased out a planter and uh, we have bought a couple of pallets of uh, biofuel willow or a poplar uh, I think that I may have overdone it on the pallets uh, I don't think I'm going to need as many as I have bought but uh, it is a case that I should be able to store them in the shed without any ill effects uh, Unfortunately in real life if you were to uh, try to store them uh, long term like that uh, They wouldn't be viable anymore um, So yeah, I'm going to get the planter loaded up with the Massey uh, still using of course the Bale Fox as pallet Fox, which is probably not the done thing and I should probably get some actual pallet forks uh, for the um, uh, the front loader on the uh, Massey uh, but for now it's uh, close enough is going to be good enough it does seem to work and it hasn't seemed to do any damage to the uh, machine itself and uh, having no end of trouble trying to undo the straps on this uh, incidentally the Massey is into the red on fuel um, though it should be more than capable of loading up a few bits and uh, as long as I don't destroy the uh, forks on that uh, on the planting machine uh, so yeah it is going to be a case of loading this up and uh, just getting out there and doing it I had considered getting a helper to do this but um, Ultimately, I decided that I was going to do it myself, and uh, that was probably a bad idea. Uh, it was after a long day of work uh, in real life, and uh, I started recording this quite late in the evening, uh, not realizing just how long it would actually take. I think I've only actually sewn Willow myself on one occasion in a game. So uh, I, must, I had kind of forgotten how long it takes to actually do this. Uh, I think we average about three miles per hour as we're making our way up and down the field. And uh, by the time I got it finished, uh, I was quite tired and it was actually quite early in the morning. Uh, as I say, after a long day of work and uh, it has to be said that I may have dozed off at the keyboard on one or two occasions uh, so if you see the lines getting a little bit squiggly um, well that is the reason so yeah, while this is a pretty slow job the Fent seems to have no trouble in pulling this uh, planter whatsoever though it has got to be said that the rain uh, makes the evening quite a bit more dismal eventually though uh, coming up to uh, seven o'clock uh, the rain clears and the spring sunshine shines out once again uh, i suppose it is that time of year when we get uh, sunshine and showers 
and uh, I am still only about halfway through planting this field uh, so it is going to be uh, quite a long evening of sowing at three miles per hour um, as it turns out uh, I have purchased far too many pallets in fact uh, as I change over, uh, I managed to make my way through the first pallet and a little bit of the second pallet. Uh, but that is not much of a problem because I know from experience uh, that when you return a leased planter, uh, unlike returning a fertilizer uh, or a fertilizer spreader, you actually get the pallet back. Uh, you won't get your fertilizer back out of a sprayer or a fertilizer spreader if you are leasing it, but you do manage to get your pallet of saplings back uh, when you return a planting machine. Uh, so we're not going to uh, end up losing out on any of our saplings. And at long last, we reach the final row of the field and begin the planting. Uh, I think it's at this stage that I am dozing off at the keyboard. And I think as I finish up the final row, uh, things do start to get a little bit wobbly. And I kind of get a little bit confused about what's going on and where I am. And uh, I, I, I seem to remember not being sure whether or not I was actually driving something and falling asleep at the wheel or whether I was sitting at a keyboard. Uh, it's a very strange thing. Uh, this is a, a very monotonous job. And uh, I think the combined sound of the engine and uh, the fact that I'd had a long day uh, contributed to things in no small way. So yeah, the field is finally planted and uh, we get to have a look at our hard work and the last rays of spring sunshine coming down uh, as we reach the close of another day. So uh, I think all that really remains for me to do is to get the planter back down to the shop and uh, of course recover uh, my pallet of saplings and uh, transport them back to the farm and uh, find somewhere to store them up. It will probably be a case that we will end up uh, sowing the rest of them out uh, next season. Uh, so we're not going to lose any money on uh, storing them up as I say. So uh, I think with that all said and done, I am going to take this opportunity to say thank you very much for tuning in. You have been watching Bloomer Brown on YouTube. And I will see you next time.